details of this Australia second innings brought up to date. Wicket for Allett, one for both of them, two for Embry, and dominated by a really superb hundred there from Graham Yallop. And certainly never played a better knock. Pure delight to watch, full of very gracious shots. Marsh eye in that leg side boundary where Embury has posted uh, two deep square legs, only 25 yards apart. Fine of the two is David Gower and Paul Allett square. Really himself at mid on there, the three leg side fielders. Tavery takes the uh, slip position now for England on his return to the side. Both them at silly point and Gatting crouching at short. Now it's a deft little uh, leg glance. Gower giving chase, he's the one man England would need to stop it, and he's just done it inside the ropes. Lovely piece of uh, feeling there by Gower once again. Still Marshall are quite happy with the result, three for him. He moves on to 21. A different field for our border, doesn't need the two men out. Deep square really comes in at silly point. for five now. Those runs have come from 67 overs, so it's been quite a handsome scoring rate. 21 to Marsh, 33 to Border, and uh, England desperately needing a breakthrough here. And once again, he's got into position well, hooked it way down the long leg. Four more to Rod Marsh. Another short delivery by Bob Willis. It got right up, and in fact, Rod Marsh didn't hit it straight along the ground, but nevertheless played a good shot for four runs. shot down there. And a little by play going on between Marsh and the slips. 
Yes, Jim, and this was the way he was out in the first innings, if you remember. He tried to take his bat away from there, but was too late, and it caught the under edge of the bat as he was taking it away. short one had to fetch up from a long way couldn't quite pick it up it was a no ball a good uh, early scoring rate by the Australians here 34 they've added in just on half an hour reduce the uh, difference now 262 wanted as high as Marsh would have uh, liked. One gets the impression, Jim, that Rodney Marsh is not particularly interested in a draw. It's either going to be a win or lose. Another short one, another hook, another four. So Rob Marsh dishing out the treatment now to the short pitch delivery from Bob Willis. Yes, Rodney Marsh can't be accused of not taking up the challenge here. Again, he gets himself into a good position and again he hits the bouncer for four. Very deep for Marsh, there's the easy single. Well, Alan Border won't be disappointed. Marsh taking a lot of the weight off him out here this morning, taking as much of the bowling as he can. He's done it to such good effect as Marsh this morning that he's gone from 2 to 30, whilst Border has gone on from 28 to 33. a difficult one that for the keeper sweep shot blinding Alan not giving him uh, no chance at all He's flicking the batsman's pads in addition this will uh, ripple of applause as the score goes past the 250 mark Chasing in from mid-wicket, keeping Marsh down to a single. And Alec keeping on moving, going now to mid-on for border. Burley once again dropping in, joining uh, both at Silly Point. straightened. I uh, haven't seen uh, a great deal of spin from John Embry. One would have thought there must have been some there in this pitch on the fifth day. Ray Bright uh, turned one or two early on yesterday. Board are quite happy to nudge that away through mid-wicket. They won't risk a second. And the 
suppose if this uh, partnership progresses much longer, somebody will be talking about Derek Underwood. Long time since it seems he was admitted from this side when everybody expected he would play, and uh, he was a little bit here at Old Trafford for the spinner on the last day. Both I'm highly delighted that he didn't make contact that time. Could have been about shin high, that. Yes, Rodney Marsh gets away from that, gets tries to get away to give himself room to hit it. And as Jim said, Ian Botham is quite pleased he failed to make contact. <laughs> that little belly act, he can come back and on, have a bowl now. So Willis finally giving way to both of them. Bob Willis not for 76 from 20 overs. And Ian Botham who had a couple of overs at the far end start the day off switching now to the straight foot end. They just realised it was swooping in to field it. Very wisely at second thoughts. Surprising bounce there, it really caught Alan Warder out. Nasty one, cracking him right on that damaged hand. That uh, could be real problems for him. A little bit of lift there, which hits Alan Border on his bad hand, and of course. It is extremely painful, as you can see. One thing that uh, Australians can be well aware of, that uh, they don't come much tougher or more courageous than Alan Border. And there's no way that uh, you'll be thinking of leaning the scene of action out there unless he is desperately hurt. He faces both of them again. I think the English bowlers will attempt to keep Alan Border on the back foot, Jim. 
because that was where they will get maximum jar and that was where that will hurt that hand. And clearly, the more it hurts, the harder it will be for him to bat. And if you can conjure up another pearl of wisdom, Peter, I'd be much obliged. We'll allow Christopher Martin Jenkins to take over here. Yes, by and large, this wicket this morning is behaving in exactly the same way as uh, it was predicted. It's docile enough. Michael Brearley has not got the breakthrough he would have wanted, which, of course, would have brought the number eight batsman in, Ray Bright. And without being unkind to Ray Bright, I think that's probably where the Australian tale starts. So Michael Brearley would have been looking for a very quick breakthrough this morning in these first few minutes of the morning. And so far, they have been unlucky. More than one pearl, I think, there, Peter. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And Embry to continue. Porter, having had the pain-killing spray put on his damaged finger. And a slightly less attacking field. Marsh having got several runs off Embry's last over. Just kept a bit low there. Marsh, 32 now, just two runs behind Border. Played very well this morning. Good movement of the feet by Alan Border. Very good player of spin bowling. So... 252, it doesn't seem so very many, does it? And that's four less they've got to get. Or four fewer, four more to Alan Border. Lovely crisp stroke off the back foot. And that brings up the 50 partnership between Border and Marsh. And they've scored at a very healthy rate and kept Australia not only in with a chance of avoiding defeat, but in with an outside chance of winning this game and making history by a mile. 2.58 for five now then. And for the first time they've passed the amount that they need to get. 248 they need to win now. And England certainly would want to take at least one wicket before the new ball. 71 overs gone, the new ball becomes available at 85. That's where the Australian wickets have fallen after that disastrous start, 24 for two. They've done very well to pull themselves around. Yallop's fine innings on Sunday, yesterday. Setting the note of challenge. And Border, a 
and Marsh keeping it going well. Mike Getting, who hasn't done so much bowling recently, but uh, once upon a time was used quite frequently, certainly by Middlesex as a medium pacer. Well judged by Rodney Marsh. Went to play it, but took his bat away in time and allowed it go, to go through to Alan Knott, the wicketkeeper. Yes, Chris, you mentioned that uh, Michael Gatting used to bowl for Middlesex. He did, and quite well as the third seamer, but then they acquired the services of a man called Daniels, Van de Bile, backed up with somebody called Selby, uh, a trio which proved to be slightly more formidable, I think. Yes, uh, I suppose it's not impossible, though, that he might get a, a chance as a wicket breaker if uh, or partnership breaker if things don't go for England Embry to continue yes certainly that's true because Michael Brill has never been slow to experiment and he not only can he call on uh, Mike Gatting but he could also call on Graham Gooch to do some bowling or even the veteran Jeffrey Boycott down into the ground. Marsh made 91 on this ground in defeat in 1972. Embry's 22nd over, 2 for 55 now. Bowling at two left-handers, which off spinners usually like. But not a great deal in it for him in this very benign Old Trafford pitch. Just checking on his fielding position. Both of them who in this latest spell as well, two maiden overs. Those are his up to the moment figures. And he 
he's really enjoying the hard work, I think. One more down to Paul Ellett, who hasn't had a bowl this morning and indeed has only had 10 overs in this inning so far. Low one, it kept low, but neither of those factors stopped Rodney Marsh bashing it away for four to square leg. Super shot by Graham Marsh. As you said, Chris, the ball kept very low, but he still picked it up very cleanly. If anybody on these two sides are as strong as Ian Botham, I think probably Rodney Marsh might be. Both of them now one for 63. And all going very well for Australia so far. The first are nearly completed and they've added 54 already. And Border not letting that finger injury put him off. Embry to Belton. It's a very fine test average, 47. And that's uh, the breakdown of those test figures for Farron and Border, still only 26 in his 32nd test. They pack them in these days. an interesting point made to me yesterday the fact that they play so many more tests these days means that they play more when at their peak and that therefore perhaps the modern player has a slight advantage when one compares records with former players but Alan Border has proved himself of requisite test class without any doubt He's 40 not out, 36 to Marsh, 264 for four. And the batsman to come, Bright, Lily, 
Whitney and Alderman or Alderman and Whitney. There's someone with even better test figures. Ian Botham, phenomenal all-round cricketer. And he's got every chance, perhaps, of becoming the greatest wicket-taker in test history. As long as he remains fit and retains his enthusiasm for the game, which perhaps was in a certain amount of danger with the cares of captaincy on his shoulders, but they've been removed and magically he's come back to the brilliant all-round that we knew before. Quite a reasonable crowd considering it's the last day here at Old Trafford and a fine day again. Not quite so uh, clear or not nearly as clear as it was yesterday but the clouds high and the forecast is for fine weather to remain. has bowled 23 overs, 10 maidens and taken one for 63. He's had a go from either end so far this morning. Willis, four very expensive overs, costing him 26 runs. He bowled four no balls as well. And uh, one way and another, no real sign of any breakthrough for England. Border 40, Marsh 36 started at 210 for five so they've added 54 in the first hour and those uh, Willis figures don't look too good do they uh, this was the ground where Viv Richards gave him terrible hammer last season but uh, he's shown several times this season that you certainly don't write him off and uh, he knows that he's got a new ball due now in nine overs time if uh, both of them wants to take it if uh, really wants to take it so one would expect him to have a rest now Peter Parfit and wait for that most certainly and this is why we've not seen Paul Allett this morning clearly Michael Brearley is keeping him back for when he takes the new ball um, I would have thought he would have hoped for a breakthrough from uh, Embury bowling at two left handers this morning and of course that would have been an added advantage because that would have brought Ray Bright in when the new ball was not very far away. Of course, uh, sometimes the new ball works against the fielding captain, doesn't it? If two batsmen are well set, they suddenly start to score faster. Yes, indeed, as we saw in the first innings um, with Ian Botham. But I think the great Don Bradman once said that uh, you take the new ball 99 times out of 100 when it was due. And the hundredth time, you look very carefully, think again, and still take it.
Well, there's the one of the two main dangers, Rodney Marsh to England, and there's the other one, Border, playing Embry away to midweek. Just a bit of turn there for Embry, and a little bit more bounce than Border was expecting, but he played it well. Uh, that's a lovely shot. But going for the drive past the bowler. Pace being taken off it by Embry, but good movement of the feet by Alan Border. Now oh, that did turn a bit. And I know this pitch uh, well outside the off stump. There's quite a bit of turn and bounce there. I'm barely asking, but. Uh, Politely only, and receiving a polite negative from umpire constant. But definitely, suddenly, for no particular reason, there was a bit more turn, Tom Graveney, in that uh, over for John Embry. Yes, no doubt about that. Uh, one or two very useful looking deliveries. And in fact, that one didn't turn and went off the knee roll pad to Mike Braley. No question of it touching the glove or anything. There it goes. You can't really see from there, but uh, not out, sir. Both of them being joined at uh, mid on by the England substitute, his Somerset colleague. Phil Slocum, I have a look at him in a moment. With uh, Mike Gatting having gone off the field. There's Phil Slocum, fine fielder. And a very steady batsman with Somerset. And England always managed to find a useful fielder to call up as 12th man after the weekend in test matches from one of the sides not playing in a championship match. Guy hasn't had much to do this morning.
They're both of them working at it, but uh, no break coming. One for 63 from 24 overs. Another maiden. 265 for five. And 241 now needed for Australia to win. And uh, there's time enough, especially with the last 20 overs, which have to be bowled in the last hour after five o'clock. So it's getting very interesting. And that's well struck by Marsh. But David Gower has put him down. He picked it up, it went all the way down to deep square and Gower just inside the rope. He may have been unaware where the rope was, I think. And in fact, it has gone for six, but there's no doubt that it was a chance. And in uh, these sort of terms, a comparatively easy chance as well. We'll have another look at that at the end of the over, and uh, it may well be that Guy wasn't quite sure where his feet were in relation to the rope, but a very uncharacteristic miss by him. And it's always advisable to make a note of when uh, catches were missed. Marsh was 36 at the time. remember Ian Botham was dropped when he was 32 and went on to make 114. Oh, well bowled Embry and very bad luck. On the other hand, Marsh picked this uh, stroke up very well. And uh, I suppose he could have counted himself unlucky to find the fielder, but he did so unerringly. Fortunately for him, as we see, Gower spills it. And uh, you can see David Gower here. He's right on the line of the rope. But really it was uh, a comparatively straightforward chance. And you can see his disappointment there. Very disappointed indeed, and uh, that would have been just the breakthrough England had been looking for. As you always feel with uh, Rodney Marsh that uh, if he's kept quiet for a little while, that uh, he's, he may lose patience and have a swing at the wrong one. And David Gow was out there just for that shot. We have a change in the attack. For the first time this series, I think Mike Gatting is going to have a ball. Yeah, well, we mentioned that Mike Gatting might be given a, a go as a possible partnership breaker. And he has uh, an added incentive because he's just been stung by a wasp. We understand that was the reason why he left the field. So perhaps uh, he'll have a bit of extra venom in him. Graham Gooch, another man who might have been uh, invited to bowl. Same sort of pace.
two more for Alan Border, so he goes back ahead of Rodney Marsh. Border's on 43, Marsh 42 at the moment. And a no ball called against Mike Gatting. This is only his second over in Test cricket. I think that was a bump ball. And this uh, struck firmly into the ground by Alan Border. Oh, and just a little bit of uh, sloppiness by England, relative sloppiness. Uh, maybe it bounced awkwardly for Ian Botham, but one way and another. They're not quite the uh, perfectly tuned machine they were when bowling out Australia in the second innings of the last two tests. It may suddenly come, but certainly at the moment, Australia keeping very much in this game and in with a chance of winning it and levelling the series. 2.31 they need now. 44 to Border and 42 to Marsh. Remember his up-to-date figures, 43 test wickets at 28. Oh, now that was similar to the delivery which got Graham Yallop out uh, yesterday evening, floated up just outside the leg stump. Not out. And there was a good deal more confidence in that appeal by Frehley than the last time he asked. Embry certainly causing a few problems here. He has bowled very, very well indeed this morning without a great deal of good fortune. Two seventy six for five, then two hundred and thirty runs needed for what would be an absolutely sensational Australian win. Bearing in mind that the most ever scored to win a test in the fourth innings is 406, and that reduces the amount needed still further. Border taking his top hand off the handle as he has once or twice when going for a full-blooded stroke, but still hitting it firmly for four. It was a fairly friendly full toss. And even with a bad hand, we don't miss out on those. Straight through extra cover. And Tom, uh, all sorts of ifs always in cricket and uh, other things might not have happened if Underwood had been picked in the side, but it's impossible not to believe that they could do with him now. A 
And there is a really fine 50 by Alan Border completed. 51 out of 282 for five. And uh, he came in when defeat seemed a good deal more inevitable than it does now. Six fours in Alan Border's 50. He's been batting now for three hours and 36 minutes. Four more, and getting is being made to look very ordinary by Alan Border. And on this pitch, uh, in all honesty, he is. So, really going well for Australia. And uh, tremendous innings this by Alan Border. Short outside the off stump. I would say his favourite shot. He gets beautifully on top there. And very fine innings indeed. 55 now. And Australia only requiring 220 to win with quite a lot of time left. Three overs to go till the new ball. And England hoping against hope that Embry can break this partnership. after it but he can't catch it Rodney Marsh is sixth four plus a six needs four now for his 50. John Embry now 27 overs, four maidens, two for 67. And Australia have moved on to 294 five. Uh, a comment on the way things have gone for them this morning from Tom Graveney, and then I think it would be highly appropriate in the circumstances to have an Australian voice. It'll be Richie Benno. And this has been a tremendous morning for Australia. They've carried on from a disastrous start First, Hughes and Yallop, and now Alan Bordner and Rodney Marsh, and they really are putting up a marvellous performance here. It's a great fight back, and at 290 for five, almost anything can happen. Mr. Tom, well, if this Australian voice has uh, a slight tremor and at the moment, it's because there is suddenly a flicker of wild hope for those fellows sitting on the balcony and for the many, many hundreds of thousands who are watching on television back in Australia today, that strike having ended apparently. It's a 
a very, very good performance from these two players, Rodney Marsh and Alan Border. Take nothing away from Rodney. It's a sensational performance from Alan Border to have made a half century with a fracture of a finger. There was some thought yesterday that he was having one or two nets out the back of our commentary box just to see if he'd be fit to bat. Well, I think he was just getting his muscles worked up because there's nothing in the world would uh, ever stop Border from getting out in the field. He's a real good, tough, gutsy character. Another one to the total. No ball from Mike Gatting, 291 for five. striker Rodney Marsh. Yesterday evening he came in when Martin Kent was dismissed. The border was 28 at the time. Marsh today has made 46 and made them very well. Only knows one way to bat and that's to try and carry the attack to the opposition. even in uh, what at the start might uh, seem to be a lost cause. And sometimes it works, certainly it's worked today in this uh, magnificent partnership. <laughs> and Mike Gatting, three overs, one maiden, no wicket, 4.13. 291 for five, 55 to Alan Border, Rodney Marsh within four of a half century. Last wicket fell at 206. <coughs> John Embry about to bowl his 28th over. down at uh, deep backward square is David Gower. Same spot where he missed Rodney Marsh and the ball went for six. That'll be exercising Marsh's mind to try and keep the ball away from that man. It's the only man in the outfield. Plenty of space from forward square or right on deep square leg, way around to long on. That's uh, the one Embry's bowling before the second new ball can be taken. I should think that'll be taken immediately. Bob Willis will come on Gatting's end. One for five. Right, well, we're through what really is the main part of the first session, starting at uh, 11 a.m. today, gone through to 12.25, Old Trafford time. We've gone through bowlers Willis, Botham, Embry and Gatting. And uh, Willis about to come back on, unless there's some sort of a mix-up there, and he doesn't want to bowl the first over, perhaps it's just a chat about field settings or bowling method. Will he bounce Rodney Marsh? Try and pick up the top edge down a deep fine leg. 
Or even will he play two men behind square for the hook shot? New ball straight away. So this is the second phase of this opening session on the last day. Australia started off at 210 for five, 296 to win, they needed then. And they've reduced that to 215 needed to win. Now is the really tense little 35 minute session up to the luncheon interval. Five wickets in hand. 215 needed to win. England need to take those five wickets. Border's taking a strike. Another one to the total, another no ball. First one with the second new ball from Bob Willis. You heard Jim Laker saying earlier that that uh, brought up an extraordinary number of no balls for Bob Willis. In this session, he's now bowled a hundred, uh, this uh, series now bowled 124. Says a lot for the law that was introduced 20 years ago. Those Australians watching this telecast uh, will have read about Ian Botham's marvellous innings on Saturday. Great pity is that you weren't able to see it. It was one of the greatest things ever to be witnessed on a cricket field. been lots of marvellous innings over the years but both of them certainly can rank with most that have been played in test cricket. There is Ian Botham who played that marvellous innings. I don't think I've ever seen a stronger man. The way he hit that ball was absolutely tremendous. Cramp for room there, it's well bowled and a bit of pain there for Alan Border. He was struck one blow early today on that broken hand. Good piece of bowling there, it uh, really tucked Alan Border up. A little bit of extra bounce there and it might well have gone somewhere near slip. It's a very courageous innings from Alan Border hairline fracture of the third finger of the left hand, the bottom hand, as far as he's concerned. Another one to the total, another no ball.
has displaced David Gower, the fielder, but uh, they'll pick up an easy two there. Takes Porter on to 57 now. The end of the first over with that second new ball. Negotiated safely by Alan Border. Paul Allard is going to bowl his first uh, over of the morning. He's been kept for the second new ball. Back wisely by Mike Brealey. Cheers to the local hero in the background. Around about, um, well, perhaps not right now, but um, a little bit on from now that the dressing rooms of the two teams have become quite tense places. Once you get below that 200 mark, teams in dressing rooms have a habit of marking off landmarks. They go uh, from 300 down to 250, and they get below 200. And a few of the butterflies will start. The question of can we do it or can we hang on? And I should think there are a few late night parties going on back in Australia who'll be asking the same question. Perhaps um, in more noisy fashion. Marsh has taken strike. He's on 46. The same tension will apply to the fielding side. Once the score gets down below 200, they won't be all that worried because they know they only have five wickets to take, and they could get a run on things, but as uh, the run list required is reduced, so there becomes a bit more pressure on the captain. field now. Brealey's going to add a little more pressure. Allard has looked quite sharp in those first few deliveries with his second new ball, so he's been given another slip. Beautifully picked up. David Gower. And he really is uh, one of the fine cover points of all time. He's got a beautiful pair of hands. Having said that, of course, he spilled the catch not very long ago. But his ground fielding, super to watch. He's 
good delivery. A little thick edge away down for a single to Rod Marsh. Well, there's um, a little bit of uh, hope from Lancashire supporters. Paul Allett, the local boy here. Two ninety six for five now, fifty seven to border and forty seven to marsh. And uh, this could be the test. Bob Willis bowling to Rodney Marsh, just the one man down at uh, deep fine. There was a man behind square just near the umpire. Both those waiting for the miscued hook shot. And everyone waiting for uh, Mike Reilly to finish dropping that helmet behind Alan Knott and then try and get back to his place before the bowler starts his run-in. been given by umpire Ken Palmer, caught at the wicket by Alan Knott off Bob Willis. A big shout from Knott and Willis and the slip fielders and the six wicket goes down for 296. 210 still needed for Australia but England now need only four wickets. Now Bob Willis is struck with his second new ball in his 22nd over. And Rodney Marsh, I don't think, will be very pleased with himself there. It was uh, a very loose shot. He's that sort of player. He likes to attack the bowling. But uh, I think he might have wished he'd just had a little look before he played that stroke. A pause there for Marsh. happened it's a very big shot and it's 296 for six just have another little look at that while we're waiting for Bob Willis to come back Mike Brearley let uh, the rest of them go up, and uh, that was all that was needed. 296 for six, and it's Bob Willis now to bowl to Ray Bright, number eight in the Australian lineup. Borders the not out batsman on 56. That's nicely stopped down there. No way in the world he could have got down to field that, but he saved two runs there. Leg by as they go down. Ray Bright still not off the mark. Another leg by.
as the single to border. Ray Bright uh, hasn't yet adjusted his um, stretch of the back foot to Willis's pace. He has to face him again now. That single bringing up the 300 for Australia. 206 needed or four wickets. 300 for six and 58 to Alan Border. Splendid knock that. Played a beautiful innings at uh, Trent Bridge in the first test on a very ordinary pitch. And here, against all the odds and injured, he's played another one. So no ball. It's not going to help uh, Ray Bright very much as he walks around there. At least it does add one onto the turtle. And nasty delivery this from Bob Willis. Ray Bright does get behind it, but it comes back and hits him right under the ribs. Bright's definitely having to hurry his stroke there. Taking a bit of a pounding, but um, he's still there. An extra man in on the onside, and the end of Bob Willis is over. One run from it, and one wicket. One for 79 in 22 overs, and two maidens. And my goodness, didn't England need that wicket? They were beginning to look a little bit jaded, but the new ball was paid off. And Bob Willis broken that. Magnificent stand between Rod Marsh and Alan Border. Lallet now is in his 12th over, 11 overs, two maidens, one for 53 before this over. Jeffrey Boycott. Stage. It was a question of whether it would be Boycott, Gooch or Gatting to bowl just three overs before the second new ball became due. Gatting was given the nod. Gatting now is the man in at uh, Short Ford Square. Ray Bright now to face Paul Allard.
And it's all body and heart and very little bat at the moment for Ray Bright. Gar is one of two men on the offside uh, there for Allett at the end of a uh, good accurate over. Just a single from it, 12 overs, two maidens, one for 54. the years uh, no one has ever approached the target Australia was set to win this match 506 there have been three quite big ones 406 India against the West Indies 75 6 404 Australia in 48 that great match at Leeds in 362 uh, the Australians against West Indies Georgetown 77 78 that um, wasn't really very close to that what you'd call a reflex appeal you should gather that it uh, came right off the pad and was about six inches away from Alan Border's bat and that really moved into Alan Border off the wicket one of the first deliveries we've seen move but a brilliant take by Alan Knott plenty of excitement in this match four wickets to fall the Australians they need 204 to win anyone uh, nearby or not so nearby for that matter who wants to come along this afternoon admission will be half price it's from the luncheon interval onwards Going back to um, those matches we showed you where teams have won, making very big scores in the fourth innings. 
That bottom one, Australia against the West Indies at Georgetown, 77-78. There are two of the players in this Australian side who took part in that, and young Graham Wood hit 126 in that match. He was uh, mainly responsible for the victory. And uh, with him in what must have been a great partnership, I didn't see the match, but it must have been a marvellous partnership, uh, was young Craig Sargent, who is not on this tour. He's here in 77. But Wood made 126 and Sargent 124. And that came after Darling, Ogilvy and Cozy, who had all made ducks. get that but we'll pick up a single Alan Border just getting a bottom edge on that it got quite high for the bouncer he's uh, bowled one or two quick deliveries uh, in the last couple of overs Bob Willis Three for six now, border is 60. Right's not off the mark, and Allard is coming around the wicket to border, still with three slips and a short forward square. And shot. But he's played a couple of those, um, mainly through extra cover. That was a uh, square of um, ordinary cover and a glorious stroke. And front foot right to the pitch of the ball there. Any young left-handers watching? That's the way to play it. Ninety-nine now for Australia. That's a magic figure for the touring team. Once they're down below that 200 mark. And there's a couple more runs to reduce it. stuck at it out there so well he's had a, a very very high regard for this fellow as a, a good working batsman has a little touch of flair about him as well but he's a very hard worker hard practicer and has a ton of courage
Good shot. There are two marvellous shots in this over from Alan Border. The first one, great cover drive, and then that was just about the classic square cut. And beautifully across, and doesn't he give that a crack? He's a very, very fine square cutter. It must be giving that uh, broken finger of his a bit of stick when he hits the ball that hard. Got a fearful crack on it earlier in the day from Ian Botham, and there have been half a dozen times, well, it's counting yesterday, and today where he's had to walk around to ease the pain a bit from one that's hit right up on the splice of the bat. Anyway, he's the non-striker now, and it's Ray Bright who's waiting for Bob Willis. And he's off the mark. And that'll be a great relief for Ray Bright as well as uh, any of his close friends who are watching. He's taken a bit of a pummeling there in just um, two or three overs since he came in to replace Rodney Marsh. He's won and on board of 70, 314 for six. Fine partnership between Alan Border and Rodney Marsh. 90 they put on in 110 minutes. Some very good uh, stroke play in that lot. This will certainly be the last over of the morning. Play began at uh, 11 a.m. here at Old Trafford with Australia 210 for five. That was from 60 overs, Border was 28 and Marsh hadn't scored at that stage. And they've gone on now to 314 for six. 104 runs in the session for the loss of Rodney Marsh's wicket. under the total 315 for six now no ball And depending on where Bob Willis puts his feet for this delivery, it should be the last one before lunch.
And it is a bright goes on to two and the total to 317 for six. So there is at lunch a very good session for Australia, scoring 107 during that session uh, with the loss of only one wicket. That was Marsh, who was out for 47. But what an effort by Alan Border with a fractured finger, 70 not out. Well, uh, we'll be back in about 35 minutes from now for a resumption of play. Just a slender hope for Australia, a very slender hope indeed. But for every hour in Australia, it's time for the late news. We keep glorious weather and wonderful crowds and uh, not a bad crowd at all today. Score remains on 317. Six men out, but uh, only one gone today. Gone from 210 to 317. The loss of Rod Marsh. And the man to dismiss him is going to start things off from the Stratford end. So Bob Willis to border. This has been another superlative performance from Alan Border. Been in a good deal of pain and discomfort all the way through those 268 minutes. But uh, seldom has he been in very much trouble with the English attack. behind it once again taking the left hand off the bat that's Alan Border's record in test match cricket and uh, there can't be very many players modern players certainly who could exceed that it's over a period of 32 matches I suppose you could say at the moment that Paul Allett's got a better test match batting average but, uh, likely to be kept as well as that one has. for Bob Willis in his 25th over now. Wicket he took just before lunch was his first at a cost of 82. the runs he requires off the last ball won't uh, bother to worry about a second he'll keep the strike now and has brought the uh, difference in the two sides now to 188 188 more wanted 318 for six it's a fine recovery after virtually tossing away the wickets of the opening batsman wooden Dyson 
using Yallop, fine innings from Yallop yesterday. Lovely exhibition of stroke play. Um, Border taking over when he departed and getting good assistance from Rodney Marsh this morning. Embry coming round the wicket to the left-hander. I'm not sure Alan Border got an inside edge onto that, although Michael Braley did react in a manner in which might suggest he just got a touch. Yes, I rather think there'd have been a bigger roar from one or two close to the bat if they had uh, nicked it. Jim, I think possibly Michael Brill is thinking on putting um, Embry's uh, coming into the attack so early after the new ball might be, as you know, with the ball being that little bit harder, if he is going to get anything out of the wicket, it will be with the ball that's got some hardness left in it. I can always remember Fred Tipmus playing for Middlesex was always anxious to get hold of the ball whilst it was still hard. Three eighteen for six. Two to Ray Bright. It's his turn now to face Willis. Three slips, short leg in for him. And another short leg just behind. feasible of course that Australia can make another 188 but uh, the departure of Rodney Marsh I would think has given them a few changes of thought Ray Bright uh, very sound very solid I'm uh, slowly gets the impression though that uh, they'd be really delighted to hang on for a draw Bright, one of these very useful, handy sort of crickets to have around. He's always chipping in with 30s and 40s, picking up his wickets and taking good catches. Just played 13 test matches. This, in fact, is his 13th for an average of around about 16. Just uh, battling to keep Bob Willis out. Going back, I think there was a danger of that ball going underneath Ray Bride's bat rather than over the top of it. Although it was pitched short, it kept very low indeed.
It's over pitched, driven uh, quite respectably through mid off. No uh, great power in it, but it'll bring him two runs. So Willis, 26 overs, one for 85. Well, there's been, uh, one's been fairly critical of Manchester weather in the past, but uh, can't uh, certainly fault it up here this match. Another lovely day. Once again, go the two uh, deep square legs. Boycott making his way back to the pavilion. And Gooch, his opening partner down there, keeping him company. John Embury switching again to over the wicket. Single there, just nudged around the corner with the spin. A quicker ball there from Embury. So still just the uh, one wicket to go down today. And Rodney Marsh. Taken behind by Notoff Willis for 47. And uh, that wicket going down at 296. Still a long way to go. 184 wanted. Four wickets left. And he's given him another diving catch down the lake side by Alan Knott. And the batsman slightly reluctant to leave, but up went Palmer's finger, and it's another victim caught. Not bold at Willis. Ray Bright goes for five. Seven out now for 322. Down the leg side, short. It looks as if Ray Bright has got a glove on it, if anything. 
and Alan Lott dives down the leg side to take a good catch. So the departure of Ray Bright. And once again, the action replay been of uh, quite considerable assistance there. Little doubt that uh, that ball was deflected round the corner. Can be a good hand for Dennis Lilly. Because this inevitably must be his last appearance on this ground in a test match. Coming in now to join Alan Border, still there on 72, having just lost Ray Bright. And once again, this is the way he went. Certainly a big deflection here, Jim. I think seeing it for a second time, it is his glove. And a fine catch by Alan Knott. And if you notice, Kenny Palmer, the umpire, is in no doubt at all. So after Lily, just Alderman and Whitney to come. And uh, Lily to face his first ball. That's confidently away. Over pitch ball, just about half volley, in fact, on leg stump. And put away very nicely by Lily. Just about to be pulled up. They'll take three. Border battling on here on 72. And they're not going to worry about uh, giving the bowl into Lily. Quite happy there to take the single. Again at the far end, for this Cibola. Well, it's still early. So allows that to drift quite harmlessly by. So success, a second one for Bob Willis. 
and a long way for his first wicket came in his 22nd over and a second coming after 27 overs two for 89 now so Australia still hanging on here for grim death thanks to the efforts of Alan Border 73 not out and just the uh, two of the bowlers to come in, Alderman and Whitney. Yet another test match here of ups and downs. That's how it's gone since last Thursday when England were out for 2.31. Thereby getting a lead of 101 over Australia. 4.04 for England in the second innings and this mammoth total left for Australia to win the game. Embry round the wicket once more. Border using his feet nicely, clipping it through mid-wicket. Two easy ones here. Bowlers, John Embry, very good off his own bowling. That one turned, Jim, but I think it pitched in a foothold. Really pushing these two close fielders back now to try and uh, keep border down that end. So there's a ring of seven men this time looking to save the single. Still tidy and accurate, 32 overs, 2 for 71. Three twenty-eight up there now, seven men out. And uh, continuance of this fine innings from Border. He's on 75, Lily on three. So Willis on the hunt here for more wickets. Then now to Lily. And after that one, I think Dennis Lily will be quite relieved to get down the other end. And Bob Willis got some lift out of this delivery, which Dennis Lily fended off his throat and it flew just wide of Ian Botham in the slip area for one run.
Build uh, pretty largely in this innings, uh, well within himself as Bob Willis, just been conserving the energy and every now and again letting a really quick one go. Round the wicket now to border. And the bouncer. Which caused no problem at all to the chunky left-hander down there. Very short, this Jim. He's almost hit himself on his own toes. And it went well above Alan Border, who had no difficulty at all in avoiding it. come to terms with his form in this series after that uh, wonderful effort he made in the West Indies in the winter. And the uh, selectors probably will be giving him a, a thought or two when they come to pick the site for the Oval. once again to save the one. <laughs> well, again, just a symbol and a pretty fortunate one. Two off Willis's 28th over, two for 90. Still 177 wanted, three wickets left. And it would really need a miracle now, one feels. Almost like uh, overseas sky up there. Could be on a beach in the West Indies looking up at that. Embry now to Willie. And John Embry certainly hasn't been afraid to toss it up. This innings, plenty of runs to play with. But uh, nobody has ever attempted to really get down the pitch after him. Right, Lily quite happy to squeeze it away past uh, Tavery. And uh, precious little to do in the field. Chris Tavery played his part with the bat, certainly. And uh, unhappily, the only chance that came his way went down. being performed again of the fielders going back. Braley back into the offside, Gatting back into the leg side. And one priest supposes that if uh, they can keep border at this end, Bob Willis will certainly be having another crack at Dennis Lilly.
order remains on 75 five now to Lily 330 for seven this has been a very good second in his recovery by Australia showing a lot more spirit determination than they showed here in the first innings ready to fire away to Lily. And he plays that shot rather well. He's played that quite beautifully. In fact, flicked it very nicely off his legs for four runs. Came in and got off the mark in similar fashion. At three runs now, he's picked up his first four. A shot any batsman would be well pleased with. He clipped it away off his legs all the way along the ground, beating the man on the boundary on the leg side and going for four runs. I think the next one will be a little shorter. And he got his own version of a cut into it. I'm not quite sure what sort of cut this is, but certainly it has that effect. He gets away from it, and it goes down to third man for a single. He starts to go forward here, Jim, and then he really sort of jumps up in the air and plays it, play it from where he is. So well, he's coming back around the wicket now to Alan Border. Willis to border. Well, the bouncer, by and large, has caused few problems to Alan Border here. His judgment's been very good. Yes, and it doesn't get up, which made it slightly more difficult for Alan Border to avoid. But I don't think he was really in any difficulty. with another dug in fairly short so Bob Willis must be due for a breather soon 29 overs two for 95 is figures as the uh, Australia total the fourth innings goes under 335 for seven really into double figures on 10 border still there on 75 a few words again from uh, Peter Parfit and it'll be Chris Martin Jenkins thank you Jim not very much happening here on this fifth and final afternoon of the Cornhill insurance 
Test Series match here at Old Trafford. Uh, the difficulty Michael Brearley has, of course, is that he has only got four bowlers to use, so to vary his adapt attack is not easy. Yes, run there. So Lily playing very sensibly, as you would expect him to do. He's a cricketer of vast experience, and certainly one of those who makes the most of his abilities. Lovely movement of the feet, finding the gap easily and coming back for the second. Remember now, 34 overs. It's taken two for 75. And the Australian fight continuing. And that total up there, 338 for seven, really making a mockery of their first innings batting performance. No doubt the pitch is a little bit easier than it was then, but they had sunny conditions in the first innings and they just didn't do themselves justice. So Lily, 11 not out to face Willis again. Willis about to start his sixth over after lunch. Order wanting a run there. And I think arguing that there, there, there really was one. Borden and out very well aware that he ought to be taking as much of Willis as he can.
One down to third man, Lily looking for the second, but it's not really on, Boink up the fielder. Not one of Boycott's better throws, he's normally immaculate. Certainly when there's no pressure on, but he wanted to get that one in quickly. Kept low and he did very well to keep that out. Border looking for the higher bounce, which has been customary with when Willis pitches it in short. Yes, absolutely right there, Christopher. It was short of the length, which caused him to go back, and it kept very low indeed. He did well to keep that out, as you said. So Willis now six overs since lunch. Two for 96, his overall figures. And as you can see, he's done a lot of work on this placid pitch. He's taken the two wickets to fall in today. Marsh going for 47, caught behind on the offside and uh, Bright caught down the leg side, also by Knott for five. There's proof of it. Embry to continue. And the close fielders hovering round uh, Dennis Lilly, Tavery at slip, really silly point, getting forward short and both them backward short. On the wicket now, Embry. That runs for Lily. Nicely tickled round with the spin. Gooch coming around the long leg boundary. Two more to Dennis Lily. Give him a little bit more air. Yes, but only slightly more, uh, Christopher. He did bowl that over very flat indeed. And with the men clustered round the bat, I think he's got a golden opportunity. He really must sort of throw it up to the bat. Possibly that's the wrong expression. I mean, pitch it right up to the bat. So 
So, 165 still needed for another miracle in this series. The odds still heavily on England, but my word, they're making hard work of getting through the Australian tail. Still to come, two genuine tail-enders in Whitney and Alderman. So Willis has been rested after his six overs after lunch, two for 96 in all, and it's Ian Botham coming back for his first bow since lunch. how half volleys ought to be played. A classic shot, this. It is a half volley length pitched right up outside the off stump, and he plays a fine shot for four runs. I think the great Neil Harvey himself would have been proud with that. Courageous vigil now over five and a quarter hours. Just getting the pad there as a second line of defense. Because he bowled it very straight there to Alan Border, who went back to start with and then came forward, but safely getting his front leg outside the line of the off stump. Three hundred and forty five for seven, hundred and sixty one to win, three wickets to fall. And Embry to continue his long spell.
Well, it would be nice for Embry if, for the sake of the spinner, he could get the last three wickets here. And that's mowed away by Lily. It looked as though it came off the stumps, but with the spin, down to long leg, not entirely in control of the stroke. But Embry bowling, of course, on the ground where 25 years ago the greatest piece of off-spin bowling in history was perpetrated, if that's the word, by Jim Laker, bowling mainly from the Stretford end on that occasion. wickets came from the Stratford end. Embry now 36 over, seven maidens, two for 78. Conditions not quite as helpful as they were on that drying wicket in 1956. But I think he would have hoped for a bit more success than he's had today. Of course, he did have Marsh missed on the deep square leg boundary. Fortunately for David Gower, it wasn't too expensive. Hundred and sixty now, and uh, still just about on. And that's very well played indeed by Lily. <laughs> Hooked along the ground in front of Square. And for the umpteenth time in the last two days, emphasizing the real docility of this pitch, because he had plenty of time to play that shot. Yes, Dennis Lilly doesn't even have to go back to play that shot. He plays it almost where he is. He has plenty of time to play the shot, which shows the pace of the wicket at this stage. So the 350 up. Ooh, and that's a bit more like it from both of them. I think the bowlers have really got to bang it in if they're going to get anything out of this pitch. Yes, good delivery. Got Dennis Lilly playing at that ball, and he was lucky not to get an outside edge. No bit off, so it's perfectly safe. Long chase back for David Gar. I think he'll defeat the ball, but they should get three. And Lily having no doubt that he should come back for the third there. Border was in two minds whether he should do so, because there's only one ball this over left. There's a ball well pitched up, and Dennis Lilly hit it straight down the ground, perfectly safe, because there was no mid-off, as you've already said. Lovely shot. Oh, my word, that travel like a bullet. He's hit so many fine square cuts, and I think that's just about the best of them. Yes, Neil Harvey at his very best, I think. Fine shot.
Look, he gets right across, leans into the ball, gets his head over the ball and hits it very hard indeed. A well executed shot from Alan Border. So Alan Border, now 15 short of what would be a really well deserved 100. As the drinks come out, and there's a chance for he and Dennis Lilly to take stock. And Border with that injured left hand, you see uh, where his finger is bound up there with plaster. It's on the second finger, or the, or the third finger, I think it is technically, the ring finger of his left hand. And that's the one that uh, was broken when he went for a slip catch, the third of the three he took in the first innings. And considering that injury, it really has been a marvellous effort by Alan Border. And it means that the incredible is still just about credible. On this lovely sunny afternoon, there's the scorecard with England slaving away all day for only two wickets. Marsh being caught as he had a big thrash outside the off stump against Bob Willis, a thin edge, and the ball deflecting to the wicketkeeper who took a simple catch, a much less simple catch by not after lunch to dismiss Ray Bright diving down the leg side. So 149 now needed in this extraordinary match in this extraordinary series. But still, I think, more to the point that England need only three wickets. And that they are taking a very long time to die, Australia, if they're going to die. <laughs> 